everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Rachel right here. Today I'm going to be doing a kind of FAQ video where if you've had a question for me but I wasn't able to answer it or um, maybe just writing it out in text wasn't good enough, this video is going to show you exactly what I mean when you're asking a question I'm trying to answer. So if you're here from a comment on another video, welcome. <laughs> I hope this will help you. There is a kind of repeated question, um, frequently asked questions on my, my own channel here on YouTube. And because those questions are asked so frequently, I find that it is difficult to keep repeating myself. So because I know I, there are a lot of new diamond painters out there that have lots of questions, Welcome to this video. This is for you. If you are a returning diamond painter, uh, thank you for coming in and having a look at this video. I do appreciate it. Um, I'm going to put up a table of contents right here on the screen for you. This is the, the, the guide for how this video is going to go. There are going to be different sections and obviously editing Rachel is going to put them in order. But basically, if you're looking to fix a problem, if you're asking a question about the components of a diamond painting, if you have a question about accessories, what kind of accessories there are, uh, how to store drills, diamond paintings, how to seal and frame, and also my own personal preferences on stores, uh, types of paintings that I personally do, and things like that, this is the video. So if, feel free to skip ahead to a part of the video that you're specifically looking for, but I hope that you enjoy this video. I hope you watch it to its full extent. If you are a new diamond painter, if you continue to have a question, please leave it in the comments and maybe someone from the community will help answer those for me because I am a little overwhelmed sometimes with comments. But if you're looking for an answer right away, please head on over to our Facebook group, Crafters Anonymous with Mrs. Crochet and Coffee and Rachel Ray. This group has a lot of wonderful people who are always online <laughs> and we like to share our works in progress, our finishes, and also answer questions that you might have. So please head on over there and join us. And if I don't get your comments straight away, someone will be able to help you. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for clicking in and I'll see you at the end. Let's start things off with drills and drill types. So in a lot of diamond paintings out there, you'll have two choices. You'll have either round drill or square drill. Some companies also have things called crystalline and special drills, and I'm going to show you the difference. So first, we have your normal round drill. Round drills have a lot of facets on them. They are very, very sparkly, and they in some people's opinion, they can be done much, much quicker than a square diamond. Square diamonds have a kind of a shimmer to them. It's almost like a kind of a, a glass effect. They are not as sparkly as a, as, as a round diamond. They, they have a kind of a, a gleam to them. The biggest difference between a round and a square is the size of the drill and the shape for obvious reasons. But with a square drill diamond painting, you can go a bit smaller with the overall size because the drill size itself is smaller and therefore the picture will look less pixelated than the round drill. However, there is a caveat. With the square drill, it can be a little bit more difficult or tedious to place them because you have to line them up. Whereas round drills I find go much, much faster. As you can see, I have squares and rounds, and you can see that these are different than the originals, round and square. These diamonds are what are called AB diamonds, which are Aurora Borealis. This is probably my most frequently asked question. Aurora Borealis is an iridescent coating that goes on top of the diamonds. It creates a sheen. This is actually a black diamond, but it has that iridescent coating on it. 
So instead of shining brightly as a black drill, it actually shines more blue gold. With these AB diamonds, the iridescent coating has more of a blue-green shimmer. Both of them have the iridescent coating. Then we have other special diamonds. For example, we have these. These are called jelly diamonds. Can you see how they're slightly iridescent? The light flows through them. And they also have that AB coating, which makes them shimmer. These diamonds, however, these are called sparklers. I got these on a diamond painting website through Facebook. I will leave a link down below. These go through a rainbow of color. They are more of a crystal than an AB. They're completely, almost completely holographic, I want to say. Very beautiful. There are more diamonds than just these. There are also what we call crystals and special drills. A full crystal or a partial crystal diamond painting, these have mirrored backs on them. Very hard to show, but these are very bright and the light shines off of them very much and it's very pretty. And these are just one of many kinds of special shaped diamonds. When you look online for diamond paintings with special drills, you want to find you want to look for special drill diamond painting. Not all diamond paintings come with these, only some. But it does make a nice little break when you're doing different shapes. There's one more type that I forgot to include, which are pretty new to the market which are glow-in-the-dark diamonds. They come in square and round. Diamond painting with sparklers, which is linked in the description of this video if you're interested, but they do actually glow in the dark. So I hope you can see that. <laughs> Apologies for the bad focus. So these are magical, and I cannot wait to use these just to spruce up my current diamond paintings. Let's talk diamond painting drill storage while you're working on a project. There are lots of things you could do, lots of options, more than are here, but these are just a few of the ones that I've tried. The first is to just use the bags that come with the kit. If they already come in baggies, you could simply put a label on them, maybe put the symbol if you want, the diamond painting DMC number, and you could put them in a row. This is how I started, just labeling the baggies and working from the bags. Some companies send bags that are super, super nice. These bags are actually from the Pink Raspberry in Canada. They use high quality baggies. Not all companies do that. So it depends, it's up to you on what you wanna do, but this system works very well and it's on a budget. The box was free and the paper was free. <laughs> So I spruced it up and made it look okay, and it works. So that's one option. You could also use, this is the first one that I ever got. These are little kind of bead containers, which come in a block of four. You can open them like this and pour out the diamonds. These are a little finicky though. And after a while, sometimes the lids lose their ability to stay closed. So it is good for a few projects, but after that, you may end up retiring them like I have. However, they can make good long-term storage later on, and I'll show you that later. So that is from, you can get this on AliExpress, on Wish, very inexpensive. Another that I have, these are circular top containers. These are actually from Diamond Art Club's website, but you can find them on lots of different sites or in boxed stores if you have craft stores. This is just a plastic little tube that has a top. I personally think that they're cute, but only for small projects. I wouldn't want to be doing this and un undoing this top over and over and over again. Just a little bit finicky for me but it does look nice and it comes with this lid 
to keep everything pretty secure. You could always tape the sides if you don't want the lid to come off. Another storage solution, which is actually pretty inexpensive if you live in the States, is Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight containers look like this, and they're all the rage. They are a kind of a more flimsy plastic. Uh, they're not very expensive. The problem with these is that they are hard to find if you live outside of the United States. Unless you have a really nice friend who lives in the States, these are impossible to find outside. So um, they, this holds, I believe, 24 containers, uh, five, 24, yeah, 24 containers. It has a lid on it, so you can have 24 different colors, and they're huge. They hold a lot of drills, which is why I like them. Two of these will fit most projects, so I would definitely say that's a good one. The next that I have here is called a Craftmate Lockable. This is a binder that has these. These are another bead storage. You could use them for any type of project. But the cool thing about these is that it has this locking bar. You press the button, you lift the lid, and it only opens the one that you've pushed up on. And when you're done, you snap it back in place. These work really well. However, because they're in such a long line, after a while, you might find it a little finicky to open and close and push them in and out of the folder. You may want to work without them in the folder. The choice is yours. But the thing that I did notice about these because it happens, <laughs> it fell in the floor and quite a few busted open several times in different projects. So just beware. These should probably stay on a desk and not near your recliner. <laughs> just saying. So that is Craftmate Lockables. And then the last system, which I have, and I'll bring it closer to us, is the Doris or Elizabeth Ward storage. These are my favorite. If you're looking for my preference, I love these containers. They are, they come in different sizes. So you can get all of the little ones or you can get the multi, multi-size containers, but they hold quite a lot of drills in one and it has this very secure lock on the side. If you have fake nails or you really like doing your nails, you may want to find a different way to open these. Some people use tweezers to open that. The bottom of the tweezers at the non-pointy end uh, work really well for that. Um, I have two sets and they're both being used because they're just amazing and I really like the way that it works. But honestly, the drill storage is more about what is accessible to you and what kind of storage works best for you and your organizational brain. If you don't want to spend the money on these, that's perfectly up to you, it's your preference. If you just wanna work from baggies, that's okay. It's diamond painting, it should be relaxing and not cost you a fortune if you don't want it to. A question that I receive quite often is how to work with Aurora Borealis diamonds how to place them. Some people find it really difficult because when they pick them up, the coating may come off. However, I've never had this issue and I'm just curious if it might be the way that you're picking up your diamonds in general. So here I'm using the black ADs that I showed you earlier and I'm going to just sprinkle them into the area where the 310 diamonds are supposed to go. I simply just pick up very lightly in place. If you press too hard, you may break off that coating. I'm trying it myself now to see if that'll happen. I'm not having that, that issue at the minute. I am using Patty Wax, which is, I'll, I'll put the, the link to Patty Wax down below if you want to check it out. I have used the Patty Wax quite a bit before um, 
placing these diamonds down and I'm pressing them pretty hard. So I'm not really experiencing any issue here. But my recommendation, if you don't use patty wax, if you just use normal pink wax, which is something that I have in this pen, you should use the pen before you go and place diamonds, AB diamonds with it. So pretend that I've done all of this section previously with the pen. Now the wax is having trouble holding on to diamonds. That's when you want to come in and pick up your AB diamonds and place them with the pink wax. So I hope that helps with AB diamond placement. I have never really had issues with placing ABs, but I have a pretty light hand when it comes to diamond painting. My experience would be to hold your pen a little bit lighter and don't feel like you have to press that drill really deep into the canvas. All right, y'all, let's talk about filling up diamond painting pens. One question that I get quite often is how do I, how do I fill my multi-placer? Well, first, let's start with a single placer. This is the normal clear pen with a squishy, and all you need to do is make sure that you take off that plastic cover that comes on top of your wax, this is from Diamond Art Club, by the way, and you just stab it. Maybe twist the pen a little bit. That fills the top of the pen perfectly with wax. For the three placer, it's the same principle. Simply press into the wax and it will fill the end of your multi-placer. You may need to push and scrape a little bit. And as you can see, it is full. Here I have the seven multi-placer. You can tell that it's a seven because it has seven written on its side. Hope you can see that. With these, it is a little bit tricky because after some time, it wears down and you might see the indentation of the drills. So all I do is I take a little X-Acto knife and I scrape along the edges and get it flat again. So after a little while, unfortunately, these will break down and you'll have to replace them, but they work in the same way as the other placers. You just fill up the placer like so. And you wanna squish it in there because there's quite a cavity there. Sorry, right, if you can't see this, it keeps focusing on the diamond painting like I think it's supposed to. <laughs> and just rub off any excess there. All right, let's get into diamond placing. I have a video on this already, so if you'd like to see a more in-depth review of how to multi-place, please check out my How to Diamond Paint playlist. I have all of these little tips and tricks in that playlist. That is where you can find a more in-depth version, essentially. I like to multi-place, and I'll tell you about that more later on in my personal preferences. But if you're curious on how to multi-place, first you need to shake your tray so that all your diamonds line up. I like to do that little shake at the bottom just to, to make sure that they all line up, especially in a smaller tray like this. And then I'm looking for areas with enough diamonds that I can go ahead and place. I like to use it for six diamonds, but you can use it for up to seven. And I like to align it vertically. I'm a vertical kind of gal. I'll go, I'll go horizontal, but I find it easier to line them up when I'm vertical because I'm right-handed and my body leans a little to the left. It looks a little to the left while I'm placing. So just line it up at the top and then rock the pen backwards like that. I'll zoom you in and I'll do it right here for you. So to pick up, you do the same kind of rocking motion and then to place it, let me see if I can find it here, there we go. You just put it down in the first symbol and rock it down like so. I'll do it again one more time. Pick up a few more, place it down and rock it. 
That's all you have to do to multi-place. It is the exact same with the three-placer, except when you're first starting to diamond paint, it might feel a little easier to use the three-placer. I find it a little difficult these days. Let me just make sure that I have enough wax in the pen. That could be the problem. Push it. Okay, and then pick up. If you're curious and you want to know how to use patty wax, that tutorial will be coming next week. Patty wax is a totally different kind of wax and it, it, it does not automatically come in the diamond painting kit, but I get a lot of questions about it, so I will make you a dedicated video. This is how I diamond paint. I like to use the multi-placer. Single placers are fine too, um, but in general, I like to use multi-placers. Let's talk about how I work on diamond paintings and all the different kinds of ways that you could work on a diamond painting. So a lot of people like to work just in sections. What's that? What that means is that they just pull back a section of the clear cover and they work on that particular section. I'll zoom you in. So on this particular diamond painting, I'm working in horizontal sections all the way across the diamond painting. So I just peel back the cover, I'll show you here. I peel back the diamond painting cover to as much as I want to work on and I stop. This will be my section and I might work from the right to the left, to left to the right. It depends on what you find comfortable. For me, I find it the most comfortable to go from right to left because then you have your drills to lean on as you're placing more diamonds and your hand won't get stuck to the very sticky glue. Some people pull from a corner and work on a corner section so that their hand can stay on whatever cover comes with the diamond painting. This particular diamond painting is a poured glue diamond painting. How do I know that? It's because it has a clear plastic film cover, very thin. When you look at the glue itself, it does not extend past the point of the drills and it's very sticky, almost gummy, and my hand can come up with it. That is the poured glue. This is a diamond art club, by the way. Uh, this is the daughter of peace and unfortunately she is now sold out. Uh, she's one of my works in progress. If we have a look at her really quickly though, I can show you that here you can see the AB diamonds. Honestly, it sparkles more in real life. Uh, the camera cannot capture that sparkle. Let me see if I can bring you down. I think I found a good way to show you. I'll show you where they are first. They're here in her bodice, here on her arm, and then in that curly cue. If I move the diamond painting slightly to the side, you can see that metallic shine, that iridescent coating on the top. That is how the ABs look on these diamond paintings. Another way to work on diamond paintings is in this kind of square sectional. What I've done here is a little bit different. You don't have to do this. This is just for fun for me. I've separated this canvas into 32 sections and I cut it with my X-Acto knife and a ruler. I went along the entire canvas uh, very carefully, cutting through that opaque paper, which is what we call this kind of paper, opaque paper, and I slit the paper so that I could pull up one section at a time. This is so that the painting itself remains a mystery to me up until near the very end, and it just makes it fun to work on in this way. No need to do this, but if you would like to cut even sections for yourself, that's how you would do it. Just cut very carefully through the paper itself, and you can do one section a day and go from the top to the bottom, bottom to top, whatever makes sense for you. Some people like to work on it this way because it gives them a certain amount of time that they, they spend on one section. Maybe you have a rotation for your works in progress and this will help spice it up. 
This diamond painting uses a double-sided adhesive. How I know that is because this is an opaque paper. It's made of a kind of a parchment or silicon that goes on the top of the tape and the tape is then rolled onto the diamond painting. So this, this kind of tape, you can see, is a little more jagged because it has to be hand cut. This extends past the line of the drills, causing a bit of overlap. And if we look down just a wee bit, you can see here on the corner that my, my arm has hit this glue and kind of made it all fuzzy. Unfortunately, with this painting, because of the canvas material, I'm unable to get this up. So what you could do to fix this problem is to use washi tape along the edges of the painting, and that will provide you a non-sticky part of the canvas so you, your jacket or sweater won't end up in this glue. However, I'll be, I'll be actually putting a different kind of tape here when I'm completely finished, so I don't mind that there's a little bit of fuzz in there. But this is how you would know that it is a double-sided tape and not a poured glue. It's also, it is sticky. This, this canvas is incredibly sticky. It's wonderful. But this is from a store that's based in Canada. They print in Canada and they're putting on the glue themselves. I believe that the magic is the combination of this very thick canvas material and the double-sided adhesive. I have had no problems with the glue on this painting, whereas in other paintings, which I'll show you in a moment, I wasn't so lucky. But anyway, that's about the sections and the double-sided tape. Another question that I get quite often is, what's the difference between round and square? And to to give you a very in-depth analysis, I actually did an experiment with these two paintings from the same store. And in my opinion, the square wins. But can you tell the difference? There is a complete post review on this experiment. I'm going to link it up here in the cards above so that you can watch it because it's very detailed. And I would definitely recommend watching it if you have any questions about which you should get round or square and what your preference would be. To be short and concise, it's up to you. But the size that you choose will determine how, it, how good it comes out. When you have a double-sided tape painting, there's one problem that you may have, which is bubbles and rivers in your canvas. Now, this is a kind of topic where we aren't 100% sure. A lot of us aren't scientists, but we have come to the conclusion that it may have to do with temperature. So if you get a diamond painting and when you pull it back, you find that there are these strange lines in the glue. And when you place down the diamonds, that they don't stick very flat then you know that you might have a problem. I have a video on how to take care of these problems uh, on my How to Diamond Paint playlist, and I will link it down below for you. Please go have a look at that video. But as you can tell, this diamond painting has been lying flat in my portfolio since the day that I unboxed it on my channel. There was nothing wrong that I remember with the canvas when I got it. Maybe there were a few rivers, but now those rivers have turned very bad and there are air bubbles underneath. The quickest explanation that I can give you without you checking out the other video is to get an X-Acto knife and scratch out those bubbles towards, on a diagonal, towards the line. Where the, where the glue was laid down, where that tape was laid down. So just go and scratch, scratch, scratch all the way down towards that line. And then take your diamond painting pen and pull those bubbles out towards that line. You have to be pretty careful because they can stay in there and 
we don't want that. So you just pull the air out. And that's it. Unfortunately, though, that doesn't always take care of the problem, and sometimes the the rivers will be will be still be able to be seen once you've placed down the diamonds because it raises the diamonds up a little bit from the canvas. So when you frame it, it's visible. However, it's really only visible to us, the diamond painters, and not to the people that we gift it to. So in the long run, it's okay, but it is difficult to deal with and it can discourage some people from wanting to work on a painting. Another very, very popular question that people ask me often on my channel is, how do I store my diamond paintings? The answer isn't as simple as I have answered in the, in the past, but it is pretty simple. If a diamond painting has double-sided tape, I usually put it in a portfolio. This portfolio is A1 size. It can fit a pretty large diamond painting, but I buy paintings that are even bigger than this, so not all of them fit here. I also put really special paintings to me or paintings where I don't want to keep the box. It's all kind of a mess. In here I have Diamond Shop, I have CES deals, uh, Nobby. There are many, many, many Nibin paintings here. But while we're here, I'm going to show you, because I just talked about it, rivers and things. These lines are not rivers or air bubbles. I'm going to show you right now. So let's use the power of the light. You see them now. And now you don't. Do you see the track? That is just an impression of plastic on the glue. It is not a bubble or, you know, air stuck under the glue because this is a poured glue canvas. This is from Diamond Shop. I really want to do this one, by the way. This one is called February by Anna Dittman. Amazing! But, so I have all of my unworked diamond paintings in a portfolio and I have all of my completed diamond paintings that'll fit in a portfolio. What happens if they don't fit in a portfolio? If I'm finished with the diamond painting, I will roll it with the drills facing outward and put it into a tube. Tubes are the best way to store a finished diamond painting if you must put it away. Why? Because it's even pressure on all sides so the drills won't tend to pop. Like if you put it in a box, it would f try to fit to the box and then those drills that are on the sides will want to lift away from the glue because of the pressure. That won't happen in a tube. So I always keep my leftover tubes. You can purchase tubes from places like post offices and um, Walmarts and things like that, of course, in the States. So this is a great way to store diamond paintings as well. I don't do this often, so please take a long, hard look. <laughs> this is my diamond painting closet, and this is where I store diamond paintings with poured glue. This is how I store most of them, and the ones that are hanging up in the closet are either finished and waiting to be framed or works in progress. So up here, I store anything that's small on this side, so all of the smaller paintings that will fit, you know, depth ways. These tubes, and I have my Diamond Art Club stacked. Don't judge me. Also, I label them now on the sides so that if I'm trying to find one to work on it specifically, I can actually pull it out and see exactly what it is. It's actually the next one that's coming up March 1st. In here, I have some clothes as well, costume, um, dress up, wardrobe for weddings and such, but then the rest is kind of just shoved in. This is a work in progress. So as you can see, it is rolled with the diamonds outward. It is poured glue, so it's gonna be no problem. All of these are poured glue. I don't have a single double-sided tape in this closet, and that's on purpose. When I do an unboxing of a canvas that has double-sided tape, once that tape has been pulled back off of the canvas, 
the tension, the pressure that the canvas was under is now relaxed. And if I were to roll it up again, it would cause issues in the glue. So I keep them flat to protect them. This canvas has a lot of wrinkles in it, but there's no problems with the glue as of yet. Uh, and this has been laying flat in this portfolio since I unboxed it a few months ago. Thank you, Christina. This is such a beautiful painting. So all of my double-sided adhesive canvases are laid flat, minus one. There is one that I'm using as an experiment to see if problems do arise from having it rolled up, but we'll do that another day. We won't do that today. I don't wanna take up all of your day. Another question that I seem to get quite often is, what size should I order? Should, sh what store should I order from? And at what, what place has the best custom diamond paintings? So we'll sit down and we'll talk about that at the end of the video because I feel like that's a personal choice. But I thought I would put it here just to, just to let you know I will cover that and we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Let's talk accessories. <laughs> This is but a, a small selection of the accessories that I've accumulated or even sold in my own shop on Etsy. If you didn't know, I do run a shop for pens and cover minders and other things. I'm going to be branching out soon on rachelraycraft.etsy.com. So if you're really interested, shameless plug there. I do sell these special flower pens, which are for diamond painting. I have rose pens, I have crystal stylus pens, which are great for diamond painting and using your phone at the same time. But I do not sell things like acrylic pens. I do sell needle minders, and that's my business card. And I am, I consider myself to be a boutique store. I have things in stock, and when they go out of stock, I may or may not bring them back, but that's the fun of it. So. I do support a lot of people out there on YouTube and also who are just making things and not making videos. That's okay too. So here you might notice a lot of people who have given me things in the past or that I've purchased from in the past. I have a bag from Kelly Head. I have paddy wax, lots of paddy wax. I have an Archer's Arts tray. I have cover minders from Fee from Diamond in the Rough. She made this herself. Isn't it beautiful? Out of resin. Then I have a lot from Beth over at Shine Shop Designs on Etsy. She's given me a lot, a lot of these cover minders as well. There's a lot of them in there. I've gotten gifts from a lot of other people as well over the past two years. Uh, nearly two years, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful time. I mean, this is a collection of a lot, a lot of time. So uh, these are from the Diamond Painting with Sparklers from uh, Diamond Painting with Tima. She can be found on Facebook. Again, link down below. Please check that out if you're interested in blinging up your diamond paintings. Um, you can get these on AliExpress. They're really cute, and they're great for those special bead diamond paintings. I've got these macaroons, which I've gotten from various sellers, and white wax, which I really do love. We have more Archer's Arts. This is a diamond grinder. Not necessary, but definitely has made diamond painting easier. Haven't had to use it in a really long time. Thank goodness. Um, Crafts with Crashly made me this pen, this polymer clay pen, specifically for my diamond painting channel. Uh, and I think I, it was my 2000 subscriber giveaway when I gave one of these away to my subscriber. But she also, her, her husband Kerwin made this beautiful little diamond painting pen stand with a 3D printer. It's adorable. Um, I have a lot of pens from friends a lot that were gifted to me, and here I do have some that I sold in my shop, but I currently no longer sell, so you might see some things that are old. No, I won't be selling them. They're mine. <laughs> then I have, this is my handmade diamond painting pen from Facebook. I love the shape of it. I love the feel of it, and I like how it looks. It's hard to capture it in this lighting. I have videos on these if you're interested in seeing the unboxings of them. 
if you search for it on my channel, Handmade Diamond Painting Pen, it'll come up. This is a gift from Tracy. This is also this is from Lace and Lathe Works originally, I believe. Beautiful pen. I barely ever use this because it's so pretty. <laughs> I just like to stare at it. These three pens are from Rich Craft, who is in the UK. You can check him out. He's on Facebook as well. And also, again, if you want to see the unboxings of those, please search in my channel. This was also a gift from Tracy. I'll move that together. Then I also, my other acrylic pen is from BFF Diamond Painting Pens. This is called Cranberry Nights, I think. Gorgeous. Love the, the red and the black on that. Then there are a couple that I have this one, which was from Mrs. Coffee back when she did her pens. And I have this one, which I made myself. I was going to sell them, but they're just too much work. And they're very heavy, top heavy. They're nice to look at though. This is a gift from Tia. Thank you so much, Tia, it's beautiful. I use it, I still use it. Uh, and I can't, th oh, this one. This is my absolute favorite diamond painting pen. This is from Lace and Lathe Works. I love the way that it feels in my hand. I love the way that it looks. It has resin and wood. It's called a hybrid diamond painting pen. So if you're interested in getting one for yourself, check him out. He's on Facebook. I have him linked everywhere. <laughs> um, so that's it for accessories. Uh, I, I love all of the people that have given me things over the years. And honestly, I would link them all, but I can't because I just, there's so many things happening here. Uh, if you are interested, if you look up, you know, Kelly, Archer's Arts, Patty Wax, Crashly, all those tags will bring you to those videos. And that's why I'm asking you, please search. Um, oh, and I almost forgot. This is Mislaid Pages, my friend Jessie, who made these cover minders. And she has just gotten her business license, so there will be a lot more from her soon. Now, let's move on to the next bit. Right, so welcome to the last part of the video. Now, this is going to be a bit more chit-chatty than it was before, so maybe get a drink if you haven't already. <laughs> So I wanted to, to touch on a few things that I didn't want to point the camera somewhere else for. So I apologize for sticking my face in your face, but just hear me out. What do you do if you want to get a custom diamond painting? Well, there are a couple stores that I've used in the past, which I actually really like. So the first one that I would recommend is Royal Diamond Painting. The reason that I like Royal Diamond Painting is because I love confetti. <laughs> I love pictures that have a lot, a lot, a lot of confetti. I like the way that it looks and it just kind of brings out all the details in a diamond painting. So I'll show you just in case you haven't seen her before. This is my diamond painting from Royal Diamond Painting, my custom of Luna. It's ridiculously sparkly. There were a couple of problems with the drills, but or with the, sorry, with the adhesive, but overall this painting looks incredible. It looks exactly like the picture I took of her. So, highly recommend it. I like the way that it came out. However, there is a caveat to that, and that is that the picture that you use for, to send into the company is going to be the one that they use on the diamond painting. My recommendation is to contact the store owner. Now, the other stores that I recommend, I'll, I'll get to that in a second because I want to spit it all out. Spit it out, Rachel. Royal Diamond Painting, the Manhui Logan Rachel store on AliExpress are also very good. And where is the other stores that I've... I've ordered customs from a lot of stores, y'all. I've heard that customs from Diamond Shop, D-I-Y Moon Shop, Com are excellent. I've seen several different YouTubers buy from them and get custom diamond paintings done. What I recommend is to contact the seller first. Don't buy the listing and then contact them. Send them a message, send them the picture. If they're a good seller, they usually give you advice first. They might give you several different sizes. 
but please do not expect the seller to modify your picture. When you send them your picture, they expect that that is exactly what you want. So if you need to tweak that photo, do it before you send it or ask them their opinion. Maybe they can help. I know that Reggie from Diamond Shop is very good at manipulating photos and making them look best for diamond painting. If you're interested in getting a little mini tutorial from me on how I changed the photo of Luna to make it the best it could be for this diamond painting, let me know in the comments and maybe I can make a dedicated video for that. But it's just too long-winded for this particular video. Let's move in to my favorite stores. I get this on almost every single video I've ever made. So if you're here because I sent you this link and you just want to know what my favorite stores are, I'm going to tell you first, warning, warning, it's all up to you and your preferences. How much do you want to spend on a diamond painting? How much does it mean to you? Do you use it for art therapy? Are you, are you giving it as a gift? Is it just for yourself? How big do you want it? Do you want it round, square, crystal? When I get this question, it's hard for me to answer. But if I'm talking about my preferences, which is what this next section will be, is my preferences and what I like for diamond painting, my top three stores are Diamond Art Club, Diamond Shop, and Evermoment. So if anybody asks me and they just come out and ask me, what are your favorite stores? Those are the three stores that I'm going to give you. Why? The first two are poured glue canvas sellers. They only sell poured glue. There is no double-sided tape, and I'll get into that in a minute. But for those of you out there who are wondering what store that I like that has the double-sided tape adhesive, it's Evermoment. Why Evermoment? Because they have a really good computer rendering software. Yes, I've had problems in the past, but I talked to the seller about that. I talked to Zoe. She understands the frustration I had, but it wasn't our problem. It was just a problem with the, the DMC color code range. There is just not enough brown to make a moon look beautiful. <laughs> so the favorite stores of mine are from, from this point forward are going to be probably poured glue only. Another thing that's really important to me, and this has happened in the past few months, I was not aware of copyright infringement and the problems there, therein. So what I would say to you is to find a seller who tries to sell paintings that are actually backed by the artist themselves. So the artist has given the license to that diamond painting store. There are lots of stores that do that. There's Diamond, DAC, Dreamer Designs, Mystical Dar Diamond Art. Um, oh my gosh, there's, there's loads of them. There's lots and lots of them. And if you want a comprehensive list of these, maybe I could make one and share it with you all. But it comes through research, it comes through learning, it comes from watching YouTube videos. If we could all learn everything there is to know in one moment, we would want that, right? But unfortunately, this knowledge that I've gained is over the past two years, and it's really hard for me to put it all in one video. So I hope you understand. Round or square? I prefer square. However, I like to do one and then the other, one and then the other. I usually, in the past, have had two projects on the go at once, one round, one square, or one big, one small. Why is that? I need the variety. I like the variety. And when I work on only round paintings for a long time, I get this itch, this really strange need to do a square diamond painting, and it feels so nice to do it, finally. So it's up to you. Do you, do you lean towards very detail-oriented, or do you just want to breeze through something? Not saying that it's necessarily your personality that's going to determine whether you like round or square, but in a way, it will definitely determine which one you don't like. Or you might be like me and you might like both. Diamond painting drill storage. Should I do it? Should I not do it? Do I do it? Yes, I do. I save my leftover diamonds and I'll tell you why. I have been in a pickle 
where I have run out of diamonds from a company and I knew it was going to take a month for them to get to me. So because it was a gift for someone and I was under a time crunch, I decided that I would pull from a diamond painting that I already had and I would use the diamonds from that kit until the, the replacements came. After that, I realized that it would be a good idea to have a library of leftover diamonds, which are good quality, that I could use to fill in the gaps if I ever need to. Sorry, someone decided to stop outside my house and freak me out a little bit. So anyway, I save all of my leftover diamonds. It's not necessary, you don't have to do it, but I do, do recommend, please, if you're not going to save them in a binder, if you're not, if you're just planning on throwing them away, please do so safely. Please. Pretty please. I always put my trash drills into a glass jar. It's kind of like sand art. It looks pretty cool, but it's also good for the environment. Please do not throw these in the trash. You can put them into a plastic container and recycle the plastic container, but as long as it's contained and not loose in the trash, I beg of you, please. My favorite type of pen wax. Okay, this is a little contentious, but I'll put it out there. I don't use blue tack or white tack or Aileen's or any of those. I use standard pink wax. Uh, I prefer to use the Diamond Art Club wax. I find it very sticky and very good, and it takes me several paintings to get through one little piece of wax. But I also use Paddy Wax, which is new to the market. I got the tin that's available on Etsy. These are available in limited quantities, but you don't need a tin. I just like to collect little things. And I have several different scents uh, right now I'm working with Warm Pear and Cedar. This thing is going to last me for months. There would be no need for me to buy more. But I like the smell. I like, I like using it. I enjoy the click sound that happens. It's very loud, very satisfying. Who wants an ASMR video? So I, those are the waxes that I use. Plain, plain pink wax and patty wax. That's it. If I'm working on a crystal painting, like a full rhinestone, I'll use regular pink wax and everything else gets patty wax, these days anyway. So, uh, using parchment squares, I don't use parchment on my diamond paintings anymore. The only thing that I will use is leftover pieces of double-sided tape or those strips from Star Or. I think there's a company called Zazu or something like that on AliExpress that sells them as well. And GB Maltese talked about um, these larger sized parchment squares as well that are available on Amazon. Perfectly fine. I don't have access to those, so I don't use them. I just use what's left over and I find it perfectly acceptable. If I'm working on a diamond art club, I don't cover up the clear plastic. I don't replace the clear plastic cover. I just use it. But then again, I'm, I'm lazy. You can do whatever you like, but that's my preference. How I seal and frame diamond paintings. So I don't seal diamond paintings unless they have popping drills, which that one right there had a lot of popping drills. I sealed it with aqua glue. I have a video on how to seal and frame a diamond painting. It's in my how to diamond paint playlist. Please check it out if you're interested. Um, I just use the aqua glue. I don't use Mod Podge or anything else. Uh, I was thinking about doing an experiment with clear glue, but I very rarely ever seal a diamond painting. This diamond painting and Worlds Away, right there, and Friend of the Maidens, none of those are sealed. They don't need to be. Once the diamonds are pressed down to the canvas long enough, they adhere completely and they won't fall off. I'm not worried about them falling off. And to be honest with you, I have so many of them at this point, it would cost a lot of money to seal them. As for framing though, I frame with these uh, special, well, they're not special as per se, but they're wooden self-adhesive stretcher bars. I have a video on that that just came out 
So if you want to check it out, uh, please just look back a few videos. And if you're watching this in the future, go to the How to Diamond Paint playlist and it'll be there. And I suppose the last question, which is not a frequently asked question, but it's probably a good question to ask myself is, why diamond paint at all? What's the, what's the appeal? Why do I do it? Why do I love it so much? The answer is, is that diamond painting is really therapeutic. It's the repetitive motion where it doesn't take a lot of energy. What you're doing is you're concentrating, you're focusing your attention on something very, very minuscule, but it's relaxing because you don't have to think too hard about it. Whereas, for example, cross stitch, which is a very similar craft, is much more intensive. You must think about how many you're counting and how many X's to make and which direction you're going to take your thread, etc, etc. With diamond painting, it's much more freeing. There are no rules, you know, there's no, you, you can go in whatever order you want. If somebody tells you there's rules, ignore them. <laughs> it's your diamond painting, it's your craft, your hobby. You should enjoy it the way you want even if that means not listening to me. Find your way. Enjoy the craft. Try out new stores. See if there's something else that you like. Maybe go hunting. It's really fun. Maybe fall into a shopping hole. Anyway, I wanna thank you all so much for watching this video. If you're interested in seeing more videos from me and you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button and maybe hit that bell while you're at it so that you can get notified when I upload another video or even go live. I do that sometimes. Anyway, I hope you give me a like, thumbs up on this video. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in my next video. Take care, everyone. Bye.